My name is Carl Adams. I'm the wrestling coach at Boston University. This is the third in a series of wrestling technique tapes that I have put together. This tape will cover escapes and reversals. My partner today is going to be Rick Lynch. Hi, Rick. Thanks for helping, thanks for helping out. Well, this tape, uh, to start with, we're going to talk about base position. When a wrestler gets in the down position, you want to assume your strongest base position. And a lot of the times, this will depend on each individual's own preference. A lot of the things that he, he will do will depend on what type of techniques he likes to shoot from the bottom position. Some wrestlers prefer to have the toes turned under. Some prefer to have the feet flat. Some prefer to, to sit on one ankle. Some will even turn both feet in and sit on them that way. This happens basically because certain techniques that they use, these different foot positions, will allow them to do those certain techniques. So that depends a lot on what type of technique that you're going to be shooting from the bottom position. For instance, if you're going to stand up, most wrestlers and coaches feel that if the toe is turned under, they can get a lot better stand up and a lot better start because this allows them to push off and step up with the foot. If you're going to do a sit out, it may be best to turn the feet flat because now the foot will slide along the mat and allow you to come to a sitting position. One of the most important things about the base position is maintaining a good base position. No matter what you do from the bottom position, you're always thinking about getting some type of hand control. But before that happens, you have to figure that the top man is going to start to attack you with near arm chops, ankle rides, and things like that. His goal is to break you down flat to the mat. So in order for you to maintain a strong base position, your body has to move. OK, I'm going to have Rick come in and start to push me around a little bit. You have to move your base in order to maintain strong position. Okay like such. If you try to stay in one area and Rick, say, chops down on this arm this way, he's going to chop me over my base. So it's important to learn how to move your base. OK, another thing that you should know and be aware of when you're working from the bottom position is how to, how to regain your base. Many times, wrestlers will be broken down to the mat here. And rather than do it to get back to their base the correct way, they'll push straight up. That's the difficult way to come up if a man has his weight on top. OK, for instance, if you hop on top here. Now you have to carry all of his weight, and it's difficult to get back to your base. So here's what you need to do if you're going to try to regain your base. First, you bring your outside knee up, and you push over that knee this way. Now, that made it a lot easier for me to come back to my base. So again, you're here in this position. What you do is bring one knee out to the side, and you push up and across to regain your base. OK? One of the most common maneuvers for the top man to do is a half Nelson. The bottom man needs to know how to break free from the half Nelson. What we're going to do is show you how to break free when you're on your knees, and then we're going to go down on the mat. OK. If the top man puts a half Nelson from the knees, puts a half Nelson on from the knees, the first thing you should be thinking about is looking away from the half Nelson. Oftentimes, you'll be able to look away real hard. Now, we want to put pressure down on his forearm first as we reach up and, and control his hand. Uh, oftentimes, you'll be able to rip his hand off and free yourself from the half Nelson when he throws it on the knee. OK, again, he puts the half Nelson on. The key thing is to look away. Look away from the half Nelson. Put pressure down on his forearm with your upper arm. Now, reach up, grab his hand, and pull it off. Pull it down. Another thing that you can do when he throws the half Nelson on the knees is what we call a wing and roll. The first thing you want to do is to look away from it again. You have to be careful on this. Because if he has a half Nelson in tight, and you're facing toward the inside, he may be able to put you on your back as you start to roll. So you want to first look away from him. 
Now from here, we're going to chop down hard on the arm. As we do that, we're going to go to the head and we're going to hop across. Step across. If you're broken down on the mat and a man throws on a half Nelson, we want to use the same basic concept. First, you want to keep looking away as much as possible. From here, we're going to put pressure down with the forearm. We're going to reach up and pull it off. The key thing is to look away. Another maneuver uh, that the bottom man needs to know how to do is to break various wrist locks. What I'm referring to is a one-on-one -on -one wrist control tie and a two-on-one. So we're going to work on that a little bit. Okay. First of all, I'm going to show you from this position a couple of techniques to break a two-on-one. Okay, if a man has a two-on-one here, the best way to break this is to come under his wrist, go over top, and just lift here. Now, once you've done that, you twist away from his hand. You twist your hands out to the side. Again, if he has a two-on-one, you come under his wrist, over top, and you lever your arm up that way. As soon as you do that, you break away to the outside. If a man has a one-on-one, -on -one, the same is true. You always want to take your own wrist to the outside. That will make it difficult for him to keep control, control of your hand or wrist, okay? <clears throat> Another thing that happens quite often uh, to the bottom man is when the top man grabs the ankle or hooks the ankle with his own ankle, okay? If the top man hooks your ankle like this, this is a difficult position to get out of if you're trying to run forward or just pull your, your leg straight out. The easiest way to get out of this position is to sit your hip to the mat and lift your leg out like so, this way and this way. When you do it in competition, it's a quick movement. You don't pull your leg straight out this way. What you do is sit to your inside hip and scoot it out like such. Okay? Now, the next thing we're going to cover is what happens when the top man controls your far ankle, which happens quite often. Uh, the top man will grab the ankle and either try to ride you with that or use it as a breakdown. Once that happens, the first thing you need to do is think about controlling that hand. You can do one of two things right off the bat. You can reach back here, control that hand, you can pull up on the hand and kick your leg back to free it because that puts a lot of pressure on his grip or against his grip, or if a man has a real good grip on that ankle, what you need to do is push back into it. Put all of your weight on that ankle. Now from here, you can pull up on the hand and kick your leg free, or just pull up on the hand and free your ankle from his grip. Okay, so again, from this position here, you can reach back. The first thing you wanna do is reach back and control that hand. You can pull his hand up and kick your leg straight back, or you can sit back into it, okay? This way, control it. And once you get back to this position, you can pull the hand up. Once you get control of this hand, it's a good idea to keep control of this thing. Because my main objective from the bottom position, no matter what type of move that I'm shooting, is to get control of this man's hand. You're gonna find that if you're rolling this man, standing up, or doing a sit-out, you're going to have to control this man's hands before you get away from him. <clears throat> Another basic concept that wrestlers need to be aware of when they're on the bottom position is how to get the top man to the side that they want him on. Oftentimes, uh, the top wrestler will come out and rather than line up on the left side, the side that you're used to having him on, he'll end up on the right side, like such. And what wrestlers need to know is how to get him to the other side. You can do that just simply by sitting out. You step up this leg here, sit through, and rotate your body to this side, and now he's on the other side. Now, if he's on this side, and you want to get him to the other side, you just sit to the other side. You step up here, you sit through, and you turn this way, and he's on the other side. That's an important concept to know if, the, if you're used to doing certain techniques from one side. The first thing you want to do 
to get the opposition to the side that you want him on. Okay, the first thing that we're going to cover from the bottom position, the first technique we're going to cover from the bottom position, is the inside stand-up. The stand-up is probably used more than any other technique from the bottom position to get your escape. Okay, a couple things to keep in mind if you're going to stand up on the opposition. One thing that I feel helps is if you turn your toes under as opposed to having your feet flat on the mat. Again, this is something that may differ with different wrestlers. However, I feel that I can get more speed and power by turning my toes under. Okay, on the inside stand up, and when we say inside stand up, that means that the opposition, the top man, is riding on this side. He's riding on my left side. And my inside stand up leg is the side that is the leg that's to the inside. If you were on the other side, then this would be my inside stand up leg. Okay. So, on your inside stand up, if you're going to stand up on the opposition, the first thing you need to do is get yourself in a squat position. You don't need to bend the elbows too much, but a slight bend in the elbow is, will help you spring as you start, to start your stand up. The other thing that you would like to do in this position is as you start to come up, you would like to be able to bump the top man. What you're trying to do is knock him off guard a little bit. So, as I start to pop up, into a stand-up position, watch with my back curl. My back curls like that. Your, your back is not in an inverted position. Your back is curled up towards the ceiling. This will help you create a little space and knock the top man off guard a little bit. So again, the first thing we want to do is flex slightly at the elbows. Now, from this position, we're going to spring hard and pop your back into the top man. On this particular stand-up, the next thing that we're going to concentrate on is what we do with this inside hand. Anytime you stand up, the key to getting away is to be able to control the top man's hand. So from the very beginning, everything will be geared towards getting hand control and getting myself into a position so that I can escape from the top man. Okay, from here. We, we spring up, we pop the back into him. Now, the inside hand comes to the inside, okay? He'll be riding on my left side. This is to block him out as I start to stand up. Now, once we bring this hand back, and it really doesn't make too much of a difference which way you turn this hand when you bring it back, but eventually you're going to be turning it over this way so that you can come to a two-on-one position. So from here, what we do is pop, Pop your back into him, the inside hand comes in close to your body. The next movement would be the movement of the foot. From here, as we spring and pop back, the arm comes back, we're going to step out. If you notice, as I stepped out, I'm going to turn my foot towards the outside leg. Now eventually, what's going to happen once I get to this position is that I'm going to pop my outside knee up. It's not necessary to move this foot at all. All I need to do from here is just rotate my knee, and you're going to be on your feet. So, once you start to spring up, we pop here, the arm comes back, and we step. It's important to get in the habit of turning your foot towards the outside knee. Now, the next thing we want to do is, as soon as we get this foot out, and this is the most important thing about your stand-up, if you can get this foot up, meaning this knee is up and the foot is out, you have a good chance to get to your feet. If you get caught somewhere in between here and you get chopped back down to the mat, then it's going to be difficult. So the most important thing on your stand-up is getting the foot out here. If you can get to this position, you have a good chance to beat him on the stand-up. Okay, once we get to this position, we're going to do what we call a knee rotation. From here, just rotate your knee up, and you want to keep your body in somewhat of a squat position. Both knees are flexed. You're not bent too far over this way, and you're not leaning too far back. You don't want to give the top man a chance to pick up a leg or trip you back down to the mat. So you want to be in a good, stable position. This is similar to the position that you would be in if you assumed your basic takedown stance position. So from here, you have this hand blocked out. And what you're trying to do, once you get to your feet, 
and all the way through your stand-up is to stop the top man from locking his hand. So this stays in close to your body. On the other side would be his, would be his waist hand. What you want to do now is come across, control the waist hand. Okay, if you would come here for a second, Rick. You would control the waist hand. You're blocking this one out. You come across, you control this waist hand. And then you would like to try for a two-on-one situation. This is important. Anytime you're trying to break free with the stand-up, rather than go one-on-one -on -one or control it with just one hand here, what you want to do is go two-on-one. -on -one. Once you get to this two-on-one -on -one situation, we like to do this at Boston University, and this is one thing that I've used throughout my wrestling career. I like to try to pull his hand down on the side so that when he tries to resist, he's pulling against my whole leg. He's trying to, to lift my entire body. So, from here, we push it down to the side of your leg. Your arm should be straight at this point. If you can get it down to your side here, you can pretty much control this thing with one hand. He's pulling against your leg, and, he's, and he has to lift the weight of your entire body. So from here, we pull it down to the side of the leg. Now, once you get to this position, there's a number of ways that you can finish your stand-up. But the key is to get to this position and control the two-on-one uh, hand control. Here, down to the side of your leg. Okay, let's run through that again with the man on top. Okay, again, the first thing you want to do is get yourself in somewhat of a squat position. From here, you bend slightly at the elbows. Now, as we spring, we pop and spring hard. The arm comes back. Now, when you step out, the arm comes back and the knee pops up pretty much all in one motion. Um, I'll do a slow version of it to show you what we're talking about. We're doing this here. Okay, now, once you're here, you should be concentrating on blocking this man uh, out from trying to lock around your waist. If he starts to lock, what you do is just keep this hand here until you can come across and control this hand. Now from here, you want to take the hand, shove it down to the side of your leg. Now you're in, in a position so that you can start to finish your stand-up. Okay, what we're going to do now is work on different things that you can do once you get to your feet and you get this hand down on the side. Once you get to this position, as I said before, you want to try to control it on the side of your leg. The first thing we're going to do is control his hand here, and now we're going to turn in. We're going to do what we call a turn in. So from here, we control it with this one hand. Now, from here, if his back foot is too close to mine, you might want to take one step forward here, just to create a little space. Now, from here, here's what I like to do. I like to bring this elbow up. So that if this hand is around my waist here, trying to hold me, I'm going to bring it down and chop. Now you control it here, this comes up, you bring it down and chop. Now, this inside foot comes behind your right foot and you're facing this way. Again, on your turn in, what you want to try to do is, again, control this hand down on the side of your leg. From here, you want to release with the inside hand, this comes up. If he wraps around your body, what you're trying to do is bring your elbow down hard here, and you're going to step back behind your outside leg and face him. It looks something like this. Control the hand here, boom, and turn. When you turn into him, you want to get your hands right back inside so that he can't shoot in on your leg. Another thing that you, you can do once you get to this position right here is just simply turn out. Once you get this hand controlled down your leg, from here you just take a step this way and turn out that way. So you can turn in or out. If you're turning in, this comes up here. So it comes down and facing that way. You control this hand down here. Now you control here with one hand. Now, step and turn that way. Another way to turn uh, out on this man, actually you're turning out and, and going chest chest to chest with him. From here, you're controlling this arm here. As you turn out, this arm comes in close to your body and you flip the across right to the inside. Again, from here, what you're doing is controlling this arm here again. You want to make a hard turn here. This arm comes back to the inside. In most cases, you'll end up in an unknown position. Okay. 
The next thing we're going to show is a step behind trip. Once you have this, this arm down on your side, what you can do is, if this leg is close enough, you just step behind that leg here, keep control of his wrist, and just squat. Take him straight back to his back. Once you get here, you want to put yourself into a Grammy cradle position. You come down with this hand, the one that's around the leg, control his wrist, put it down between your crotch, and lean towards his head. Okay, again. Your cue here is where his leg is. You have his hand down on your side. Now from here, you want to step back quick and step behind his leg. As soon as you step behind his leg, you pull this down hard right in towards your midsection. From here, you just sit and squat, take him back towards his back. Once you get to this position, wrist control between your crotch. Something else that you can do from this position, you have this hand down here, and say this man is fighting this hand, he's fighting it back up and trying to lock. You can go right into a switch position. From here, you just control it with the inside hand this time. Now, before you get to lock, you just come here, boom, switch, and a lot of times you'll be able to end up facing the opposition. The same is true if he locks his hand. If he gets his hands locked, the first thing you should concentrate on is going to a two-on-one situation. Oftentimes, wrestlers will be trying to break a grip like this, one hand on one hand. Anytime that happens, if, if he gets his grip, you want to go two-on-one. Now you can push down hard and use your hips to break the grip. So it's important, if he gets his hands locked, to go two-on-one as opposed to one-on-one -on -one trying to break his grip, okay? You can also use your switch situation from here. If a man has his arms locked, you can fake one way, this is a good setup for it, and then come back and switch the other way. Oftentimes you'll end up here and be able to turn. Many times you'll end up broken free from him for your one point escape. Okay, again, he has his hands locked, you fake him this way, and now he comes right into position so that you can hit your switch to the other side. Here, you switch real hard, come right down, Basic. You may get your one point escape or you may even, even get your two points reversal. Okay, the next thing that we're going to cover from the bottom position is, is different sit outs. And we're going to cover just the basic sit out, turn in, sit out, turn out first. Okay, from this position, if you're going to sit out on a man, normally what the top man does right off the whistle. Just chop this near arm, okay? If Rick is on top here, the whistle blows. Like I said before, a lot of times he'll come right in and chop that arm. So the first thing I like to do on this set out, turn in, turn out situation is take this near arm away from him. And the way I take it away from him is twist it in straight towards my chest. So when that whistle blows, I'm going to say go, and Rich is going to start to chop my arm. Go. You, tw you twist it in, and that takes it away from him. Now, the next natural movement for this arm is to set it across, this way. So what we're doing is setting this arm in and across. Now, as that is happening, this inside knee or outside knee is going to be popping up. So from here, you pop it in to take it away. And I think that little concept is important. Then you set it across. Okay, now you pop your outside knee up. You want to keep yourself in a good, strong base position. Now you sit the inside leg through. As soon as you start to sit this inside leg through, you want to be coming to a hand control situation. Right here. Okay? You want to be controlling that hand. Keep this arm in close to the, the side of your body so he can't underhook you or pull you back in a chin suck. Control this hand. Now, to turn in, you want to make the shortest possible turn possible. What we're going to do is rip this hand away and we're going to roll to the point of the shoulder. From the, to the, from the point of your shoulder, you're going to kick the leg over, and there's two ways to make your complete turn. You can kick one leg over as you scissor the other leg back, like that. Now, this hand comes out. This would be your anchor hand. It's important to get that hand out to stop him from coming back behind again. Okay, again. So from here, the first thing we're going to do is take it away from it. Set it across. Now, from here we pop up, we sit. Now, as we start to turn in, if you notice, and I think this is, this is important, both knees are pointing in the same direction. 
I don't have both legs straight out this way. Both knees are pointing in the same direction. This makes it easier for me to start my turn in, push off on both toes, and start to turn. Okay, from here, we can kick the leg over and turn in, and this inside hand comes out as an anchor. But as we start to turn, as we go to the point of the shoulder, we're gonna rip this hand away to turn quick. This way, with the escape. Again, a key factor there is the way that you control this hand. Okay, so from here, pop it in, set it across, knee pops up, sit, rip it away. You can kick this leg all the way over that way, or from this position here, you can make your turn even shorter by scissoring your leg back this way and coming out that way. Okay. The nice thing about this type of sit-out is that you can do it the same way if you do what we call a sit-out turn-out. Okay, I'm going to do it by myself first. Okay, again, from here, you're going to do the exact same movement with your hands. From here, we pop the elbow in, you set it across, we pop the knee, we sit through. Now from here, rather than turn back in this way, we're going to bring this elbow up, shift the hips, and turn out. What that movement does is put you into a switching type position, or what we call a high leg under position. Okay, again, same type movement. From here, twist it in, set it across, pop the knee, we sit through. Now from here, we're going to bring this arm up, bring it down hard, close to the body, shift your hips, and turn out. You would be getting this type motion on your sit-out turn out. Okay, now, if you're working on this as a drill in the wrestling room, you can work on sit-out turn in, sit-out turn out. Okay, here's what we're talking about. From here, you pop the elbow in, you set it across, you pop your knee, and you hit your turn in. Then you do the same thing with your turn out. Pop it up and over, sit, turn out, turn in. Okay? That's a good little drill to teach you how to go one way and then the other way. Okay. As far as what you can do with your turn out, we'll just run through that real quick with a man on top. Okay, as I said before, when you do this, this and this, you pop this, it puts you in a real good position to get your switch right here. Right into your switch, you break them down, and you rotate up top or you reverse them. Sometimes, this will happen. You'll do the same type of movement with your hands, start your switch here. Now, from here, you, you pose this hand on the mat, this way to do, and you face it. I call that a high leg under. Okay, watch again. This is when the top man braces up and it's tough for me to finish my switch. Okay, from here, pop it in, set it across, pop the leg up. Okay, now I start my switch. He holds me up here. I post the hand on the mat. This leg comes out and we face it. Okay. The next series we're going to cover is what I call a front sit series. It's the same type of thing that we did with sit out turn in, but we're sitting a different way. To get yourself into a front sit series, and I'll do it by myself this time, all we do is throw both legs out front, pretty much straight between both arms. From here, we just shoot the legs through, and we scoop like that. Now, from here, you want to make sure that you're leaning over, and you're keeping your body curled up in somewhat of a little ball. When the parts of your body are close to the center, you have power. So you're keeping your elbows in close so that you can go either way and so that you can react to what the top man does. Okay, again. From here, we're just gonna throw the legs out front. I like to throw them out front and then scoop back into it. Now, once you get to this position, here's what happens a lot of times. Okay, Rick. Okay, a lot of times the top man will, will put on a bar on here to go over this arm here, stick on a bar arm, and try that type of a technique to control you. When he does that, we're going to work on a few things. The first one is a simple drag. To drag this man, the first thing you need to do is control this hand. Control the hand that's around your waist. This is if he's trying to bar you back down to the mat. 
Now, the next thing that's important is your foot movement. Okay, let's turn this way just a little bit. Okay, he has this arm barred up, and we're going to do what we call an arm drag. We're going to shift the feet first. Here and here. Now, from here, we're going to scoot and pull the arm and come out on top. Okay, watch again. Okay, I have my front sit position. He bars an arm. I want to first control his hand. Again, we're back to the hand control concept. Now we're going to move the feet. One, two. Spin and turn. Okay, that's one. The second thing you can do, uh, if he bars his arm up again, again, we want to control this inside arm. This is called a gazzoni. I don't know where they got the name from, but this is a gazzoni. Okay, we want to post this hand on the mat. From here, all we're going to do is raise this arm high, and we're going to roll through this way and come out behind that way. Okay. Okay. Again, we're in the front sit position. He bars the arm. Control the hand. Push it down to the mat. Now, what we need to do is raise this high, scoop through, come around, and behind. Okay. The next thing we're going to do, uh, we do when a man has two underhooks. If a guy on the top really knows what he's doing, he's probably not going to come over your arm, okay? He'll probably go to the two underhooks, that situation. What you need to do is work on the hands first to see if you can free your hands. You can just pull both hands in close to your body, work on one at a time. Now, once you get to this position here, once you get one cleared, you can reach up, pull his head this way, and you can go either way. Whatever way feels comfortable, you can pull his head down this way and turn. Or you can take his head all the way across and turn. Okay, if you're in a situation where you can reach back and grab his head with both hands, you can do the same thing. You can pull down hard this way and turn. Or if you get a tight enough grip, you can pull it across this way and turn. In either case, you should end up on top. The next thing we're going to cover is the basic side roll. So far, we've done stand up and sit out. Anything that you initiate from the bottom position will come from one of these three movements. It's either going to come from a stand up, a sit out situation, or a roll situation. On the basic side roll, the most important thing that you need to do is control the opposition's wrist. Again, this goes back to the hand, hand control concept. Everything that you use from the bottom, you should be controlling some type of wrist or hand when you start to initiate your movement. From here, if you're going to side roll, on this particular side roll, you can do it two different ways. You can control a man's wrist here and around the waist, lower around the waist, or what you can do is bring it up high and put yourself in a position to do what we call a shoulder roll. When you initiate your side roll, it's important to, and rather than go to your head, to go to the point of your elbow. So as we bring this arm up into a shoulder roll position, we're going to pull it in tight. If you notice, I'm controlling behind his hand. Oftentimes, wrestlers will come up and they'll control the fingers. It's too easy for me to slip off in this situation. So you want to control his wrist behind the thumb so that you can get a nice tight grip. So from here, we pull it up high. Now, once we get to this position here, the elbow is still going to be pointing out to the side. We're not going to roll him by bringing the elbow back in close. From here, you're going to go to the point of your elbow. Your inside knee is going to pop up into his midsection, and the outside knee is going to follow. It's going to look something like this. From here, the inside knee goes up, the outside knee follows, and you go to the point of your elbow, like such. Now, as I start my roll, I should have ended up in this type of situation. And the first thing you think about once you get to this position is that you don't want the top man to move back and get parallel. In this situation, he has a chance to rock around your body and possibly flip you back across. So as soon as you get to this position here, after your side roll, you want to move perpendicular. Immediately. You want to keep control of this hand. We'll, we'll go through a couple ways that you can finish this in just a few seconds. Okay, again. 
On the side roll, the first thing you want to do is control his wrist. You bring it up high around your rib cage. This is on the shoulder roll, uh, side roll. From here, you're going to pull it in tight. The elbow is still pointing out. Now, from here, the inside knee goes up into his stomach area. The outside knee follows, and you go to the point of your elbow. You don't want to go down to your head. Here, here. Now, as soon as you get here, you leave this arm to the inside so that you can block him from coming parallel. So you move perpendicular. Okay. Once you get to this position, there's a few different ways that you can finish your side roll uh, technique. Control this wrist. This is very important. One thing that, that you can do is just to turn down towards the leg. From here, you just come down in between the legs. I like to go into what we call a navy ride position. As you make your turn, you come between the legs. Oftentimes from here, the man on the bottom will now try to turn away. As he tries to turn away, you slide this knee up under so that you can pull this back up and put him into a position so that you can put your half Nelson on. If he turns back into you, this way, you lock this leg up and block it up with your inside knee. So from here, you control him here and try to keep him on his back. If he tries to turn away, you scoop the other leg and into a navy right position. Pull him back up and look for your half Nelson. Okay. Another finish that you can use from this position is what we call a Granby cradle finish. All you need to do is control this wrist again. Now you look for his inside leg. Just come around, lock his leg up, go two on one, put down between your, your crotch, and lean towards his head. You want to keep your head away from his leg. Oftentimes, the bottom man now will try to hook your head with, with his leg. If you leave your head here, he can hook over and possibly break free from your grand cradle position. So once you get to this position, the hand that's around the leg is on top, the one that's around his wrist is on the bottom, you pull it down hard, you lean back and towards his head. Okay, another thing that you should be concentrating on if you're gonna side roll a man, sometimes you'll need to do what we call an elevator. So from here, as we start to side roll, whether we side roll him from here or from here, what you may need to do to get more elevation sometimes is to go into what we call an elevator with the inside leg. So as we go to the point of the elbow, what we're gonna do is use this inside leg to lift and kick. Now, as soon as we do that again, we're gonna move perpendicular and position your body so that you can work to your finish. Now we're gonna do what we call an inside roll. And it's done very similar to what we did when we did the basic side roll. From here, rather than control this wrist with the outside hand, we're gonna control it with the inside hand. Now, the key here is to use this inside leg to elevate. We're just gonna pull, pull this arm across, we're gonna sit the inside knee up, with the outside knee is gonna follow. This goes here, this goes here. Now, as you, as you position yourself here, you're gonna use the inside leg to elevate. Keep the wrist control, elevate across. Now, you sit perpendicular. Once you get to this position, you control the wrist and work into your finishing position. Be here or into a grabby cradle situation. Okay, again, from here, you come across with the inside arm. Control his wrist. Now you're gonna move the hand across. The inside knee goes up into his stomach area. The outside knee follows. From here, here, you look for your elevator. You lift the paw, move perpendicular. You come back, control the wrist. Now you're ready to work to your finish. Thanks, Rick. You're welcome. Thanks for helping out. Thank you. Uh, today, we'll do the head post series from the mat. Uh, first of all, we'll get in a referee's position, and I'll get my uh, Alberta get on. Basically, a head post position, one of the most important things that you need to remember is that you establish a very good base once you sit out. 
So from the sit-out position, this is what's called a very good base. Your hips are up under you, your feet are up under you. If you get into this position, where you're laying flat, this is what will happen to you. Your opponent will pull you back. From this position, establish wrist control. Number one, establish wrist control. Number two, keep the far arm into the body. From this position, we will turn to the far arm. We will go from shoulder to the top of our head, like so. Once we get to the top of our head, I like to do what is called stop sign. That is posting the arm out to prevent your opponent from going behind. If you fail to post your arm out, your opponent will go behind once you do the turn. So you see, it's very important that you establish a good stop sign. We call it the stop sign because if it's out, it prevents him from going around. Now I'll show you what the move looks like from the beginning. Referee's position, we sit out, arms in tight to the body, I will turn to my head. Sometimes your opponent will chalk you to the side, he even helps you. Pop the arm out, sit through, cover the legs, and on top. One very important thing you need to remember from here. Once you've established wrist control, don't let go. Keep the wrist. Well, I'll show you that one more time. Sit out position. Wrist control, one. Nice face. Arm tight to the side. Heat chops. Stop sign out. Sit through. Maintain wrist control. Don't let go. Cover. And finish your move. Now, there are some other things that you can do from this position. From the sit-out position, you can bait him by forcing him to put his head over your shoulder. If I don't like this side, use my head and rotate it on the other side. We call this a head pick. We pick the head, turn away from the head, away, face it. Sometimes you may even end up in a front hand and arm position from here. We turn hard, here, catch the head, arm, and finish. One more time. From this position, he's expecting, say, the head post. So what we'll do is we'll turn away from the head, here, and finish. Now from your position here, just a review, quick review, you need to remember a couple of things. First thing, establish a good base. This is a poor base. Okay. This is a good base. Keep your back straight. Wrist control, number two. Make sure you establish good wrist control here. Number three, keep the far arm close to the body, as close as possible. If you don't, this is what will happen. If you put your arm out here, it will create pain in your shoulder. And this is the pain. When I stick out here, he'll underhook, or he'll either grab my arm, and he'll pull it back, and he'll take me down to the mat from here. And I've lost a move. Now, if I keep my arm to the side, he has nothing. He can't underhook. And he can't pull the wrist back. If he grabs the arm and starts pulling the wrist back, look what he's doing. He's setting himself up for the move. He pulls back, stops by now. Now that's just one move from here. From the sit-out position, you sit through. I'm going to cover two other things that you can do from this position.
number one, we'll sit out, turn, sit ahead, sit through. Notice the stop sign stayed out. Cover the legs and finish. Second thing we'll do from here, from our sit out position, we'll turn to our head and he will start coming around. He cannot come around because the arm is preventing him. I will grab his leg and roll. I will grab the near leg and roll, the leg that is closest to me. Here, turn, he comes around, I block with the arm, I change off, get through, and I roll. Finish grand position. Show you that one more time. Sit out, turn to the head, stop sign out, we block, rotate on your head, he can't come around, release, hook the leg, now what we do is we'll sit under with our right leg, here, and finish the roll. You may also attack the far leg, that was the near leg, the leg that's trying to get around the stop sign. From this position, to our head, block, rotate, rotate, sit up under him, grab the far ankle, here, pull it in tight, roll, release the far ankle, grab the near ankle, and finish. Okay. Now, one very important thing that you need to remember. A lot of young kids who are first trying this, they fail to go from shoulder to head. They lay the side of their head or face on the mat. And now they can't get up. They're stuck. So one very good drill that you can try with this, okay, we will start with a partner. We'll do it with a partner and without a partner. First drill. Here, sit out as quick as possible, here, and turn directly to the top of the head. Stop sign should be automatic. Here. Now, without a partner. Referee's position, sit out. Notice that the arm is closed. Wrist control, top of the head, walk around. Okay, now once you walk around, you can sit through and finish.